speak about Lashon Hara, it's not Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara means to care about each other, not to hurt each other. To care about the other person like I'm, as much as we would care about ourselves. And we have thanked the Weinberg family. Rabbi Tzim Weinberg, Allah Shalom, Chai Peg Mirel, Das, Dochum Ephraim Fischel, Zechariah Mirel, Rachel. I think she was my biggest Hasidist. And, 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 and she was the one who put me on the map. She made all these big, uh, uh, when she used to make the, the big Shmir Salashan gatherings, and she was so proud of it. It was made in the Sianca Elementary School, it was made in the high school, it was made in the shul. And always, she always, afterwards, even when she sometimes she wasn't feeling so good, but the pride that she had, and the pride she has now, her Nisham is surely here, seeing the crowd here, coming to hear what the Rabbi Nisham wants from us in this world, how we should interact with each other. And that's what she always was concerned about, how a person should be happy with their life, happy with their family, happy with the lot that Hashem gave them. If you're happy, you don't speak Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara comes if you're not happy. If you have Betochen, you don't speak Lashon Hara. If you have, you're happy and you're happy with yourself and happy with your lot. And that's what she was always making, trying to, she made the Simcha programs to sing and because <coughs> if you're happy and you feel that Vanisham, everything Vanisham gives you is good, then you act different. The Vanisham sent down in the last generation three great people who changed the world and is preparing the world for Mashiach. The Vanisham sent down Chavetz Chaim. Chavetz Chaim with his Mishnabrura. I mean, his Mishnabrura, everyone knows him about Chavetz Chaim. Mishnabrura is the safer in Halacha that everyone learns now. The how to act or Chaim and all the halachas. And the Vaishnav sent him down, and the Chavetz Chaim starts his safer that he was always wondering why Mashiach is not here yet. The, after all the 1900 years in Golis, they're still from a Yidin. We're still here. We're still here. After all the tribulations we had, and they're still from a Yidin. How come Hashem didn't send Mashiach? And the Yidin are, are careful in so many mitzvahs. So he saw one mitzvah that he saw that most of Klal Yisrael, most of Klal Yisrael, is not careful in, and that's Lashon Hara. And he saw that that if we're not taking, making sure to be careful of this, Mashiach can't come. Mashiach can't come as long as we still have this aver prevalent among us. Mashiach can't come. I always say, you know, we have everyone learns halachas. Can every, anyone in this room say, I didn't say one word of Lashon Hara today. I didn't say one word of Lashon Hara about anybody. You could all say you didn't eat pork. You could all say, why can't you say you didn't speak Lashon Hara? Lashon Hara is a bigger vary than eating pork. Lashon Hara is, uh, does much more harm to the world than eating pork. But because the mouth is so easy to talk, and because we're emotional, we speak sometimes from emotions, we speak sometimes things that are bothering us, things that hurt us. So that's why we, we, we do it, and that's why the Chavetz Chaim came with a Sefer. And it's unbelievable, the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, you know, the, as I once heard from Rav Shalom Shadron, just imagine the biggest gangster sitting next to the Chavetz Chaim. Someone, uh, he was speaking about Al Capone. I don't know how many of you young people know about Al Capone. Those who know about Al Capone. It, uh, he was the, the gangster of Chicago and the gangster in the 1930s. Who it was, uh, it was, it was for him to kill a person was like us, you know, just uh, uh, swatting the fly. And let's Im just imagine him sitting next to the Chavetz Chaim. And Chavetz Chaim starts telling him, you know, if you speak something bad, you know, you're killing people, and he laughs at him. You know, what, what is this rabbi talking about? You know, we're talking bad. You know, like, uh, you know, uh, and but uh, and so it says in the pasuk, "You data hayoyim, ba'shavoyse levecha." You should know today, and you should put it to your heart. So the first, explain why does that say a double? You should know 
and you should put it to your heart. So he said, because you could have a, the mind of the Chavetz Chaim, and you could have the heart of Al Capone. You could know, you, your knowledge could be there. You know you shouldn't do something. But are you not doing it? People could have the picture of the Chavetz Chaim in their house. In front of that picture, they'll speak Lashon Hara. They have the big picture of the Chavetz Chaim there. And they all want, and, and in front of that picture, Rabbi Tzumaymik used to send that picture for Purim, Shachmanis. And, but just, you, you have the picture there, and, and you, so a person has to, to, to know that that's why it's important to learn every day to halachas and to go and bring, put it into practice. And the hardest place to put in practice is the closest to home. Parents, parents, speak people, you know, you have grievances against your parents. Parents complain about their children. Parents, you talk about their children to others. Children who talk about their parents to others, to their spouses. It's lush and horror. You're not allowed to speak. But we do it because it hurts. It's people some, sometimes, and people feel, don't even realize the bear of the lush and horror. No, you, it's people speak to the spouse against their parents. People speak to others against their parents. Speaking against parents. And, you know, people think, you know, they're allowed to, they, they don't realize. And if you read the book from Rabbi Weinberg, she has about Kibbut Ava'im. So that's why there's such a big reward for Kibbut Ava'im. And why it says Arichas Yami. Because it's very hard. It's very hard. You go through life, you, your father said something to you, your mother said something to you, and you complain about it. And you think you're allowed to complain. You have to vent it. You have to say something. But just imagine, after 120 years, you go and your parents say, look at all the things you spoke against us. Look at everything that's happening to us because you spoke against us. People after parents pass away from this world, speak about their parents, complain about their parents, complain what happened, what, ki- what happened in the home. Kibbut Avayim, Oshon Hara, starts with how do you respect your parents? <coughs> to remember, to remember how to respect parents. If you have elderly parents, it even gets harder. Complaining, you know, it's so hard on me. And some people put their parents in a place where they can't, it, don't bother them. And 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 you know, it and it's if you care, how could I talk against my parents? How could I say something hurt them? How could I hurt my parents? Just imagine my father would stand next to me and hear me speak about him. My mother would stand next to me and hear me speak about her. After everything she did, she deserves it. I'll speak against her. Does she really deserve it? What she did for you? And besides the point is the midst of Kibra Avain. There's the midst of Kibra Avain. Parents complaining about their children. Talking to others about their children. Calling up their sister and say, this is about my child. Calling their best friend, speaking about their children. Slash and horror. Slash and horror. If you do have to vent, there's halachas, where you vent and how you vent, and who you should vent to, and when you should vent. There's the, there's the halachas of toelis. And there's nothing wrong with venting. If it's done for that purpose, and, and it, so you have to know that it, you vent to a person who won't go and speak about it to others, a person who, just imagine, a person gets married, and, you know, and there's always the friction between in-laws, you know, and, uh, and the, the, hu- the wife or the husband says something to, the wife says to the husband, you know, my mother did this. I mean, you're not doing any favor to anybody, telling your husband about it. The husband will just have another reason to be something against your parents. A- and people do that. They get married and they speak against their parents. And, and then you speak against children. It's Lashon Hara. And that's why there's 31 Averis a person could be over when you speak Lashon Hara. There's 31 Averis you could be over. And Kibbut Avaim is one of them. When you speak Lashon Hara against a parent, besides being over, Lashon Hara, you're over Kibbut Avaim. Moira Avaim. You have to be scared to speak against your parents. You're speaking against the Shechina. Parents are the Shechina Kabiyachu. A father, the Gemara brings down that uh, 
when the Tarvin used to hear his mother going, he used to go and say, the Shechina is coming. Give it have aim. You know, friends speak about their parents to each other. Teenagers, teenagers are hard years. Teen years are very hard years. You know, and, and, and you know, sometimes people f don't feel the parents understand them. Sometimes they feel that they don't act properly to them. Do you have a right to speak against them to someone else? Do you have a right to put them down and speak against them? If you do have to vent it, and then go to somebody, you go to someone a professional, to a rub who knows how to handle it. If you feel there's a, someone in school who knows how to handle it, then will be discreet. And you're not just speaking against them. But if not, the cover of parents, care about parents, caring about elderly parents, and you know, and the sandwich uh, generation, you have, you have your children and your parents, and you're all in trouble, overwhelmed, speaking against your children, speaking against your parents, speaking against your spouse, speaking against your siblings. You know, it's, uh, it's all, the Rabbani Shalom wants us to, to love each other. And the biggest love is for your parents, and the biggest love is for your spouse, and the biggest love is for your siblings, and the biggest love is for your children. And if you love your child, you don't speak against them. Because when you go up to Shemaim, your words are going to be there, and they'll hear what you said against them. Just imagine if you said something against your child, and all of a sudden you come up to Shemaim, it's broadcasted all over. And nowadays, Rabbi Hashem Special Megal Kovitz Chaim said that we have all this, uh, this new technology where you could see anything that's happening in the world and hear anything that's happening in the world and everything is recorded and so if, if we do have grievances you should vent it into the right place but remember if you do it to the wrong place it's Lashon Hara and you, you, you're very, you have to be very careful even if a person you know you have elder parents you know my um, Shmei Bracha you say a story that he had in Detroit when he came to Detroit he said, uh, someone called him that he wants to, uh, he came to visit an elderly person in an old age home, and he said he wants to call the son to the entire. Why does he want to call him to the entire? He said, it's one thing, he, you know, he can't take care of me, so I'm in the old age home. But why can't he come visit me? He, why doesn't he come visit me at least once a day? He should come visit me at least once a day. Let him come visit me at least once a day, he should come visit me. So he said, okay, he went to the son, and he said to the son, you know, your father has a good complaint. You can't go visit your father at least once a day. He, he, he says he comes once a week. So he said, Rebbe, you know, get, you know how old I am? I'm 78 years old. I'm not a youngster. My father, Baruch Hashem, is almost 100. It's hard for me to walk. It's hard for me to walk. You know, what does my father want from me? I can do as much, I do much more than I could. So my father was went back to, to, to the father and said, look, your, your son is not a youngster. He can't come to you. Eh, a young gach. He's a young gach. He's a young He's a pet shesach. He's just babying himself. If a parent, a child is always a, he's a young child. Why, why, why doesn't he come to me? But it means you should be sensitive. You know, parents are waiting for a phone call. You go on a trip. We all know that. And, and you go on a trip, and you don't hear from your child. And, you can, and your imagination goes all over what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. You think already the worst, the best, anything. And just a little phone call. A little phone call. You, you have an elderly parent who's uh, sitting all day shut in. You know, uh, one phone call, at least one phone call, a few phone calls a day. I know there's some people who, the, you know, they call the parents a few times a day. And, and a, a wife and a husband, the, uh, the, you call your husband during the day. You know, show that you care about him. Show that you don't forget about him. Show that you, 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 you care. The, same, the husband should show, do the same thing. Children to parents, and parents to children. A parent, you know, it, uh, you call your child, you care. Show that you care. Children sometimes feel, you know, and you know nowadays with our technology, you know, you, you come to the parents, you know, everyone is on their cell phones, you know. You can't talk to your father, you can't talk to your child, you can't talk to your husband, you can't talk to your, everyone is busy, you know, you, you come in and, and, and you know, uh, and we all know this. 
how important it is to show some attention. Y- your child comes home, show what did you do in school? How did you do in school today? You know, one of the famous families in America said that you know all the children turned out special. The father said, wherever he was in the world, he always made sure he ate supper with the family. He always sat in with the family to eat supper. To, to always be, to show how important, and every day, everyone in the family, how was school today? What did you do in school today? Show interest. Show interest in the other person. You come home, your, your husband comes home, how was your day? And the first thing shouldn't be complaining. It shouldn't be the first thing, shouldn't be, oh, you had such a terrible day. You know, first thing, when you, you know your husband comes home, you put up the biggest smile. Make him feel good. Make him want to come home. I know there, there one time a person called me up that he doesn't come home every day till two hours after work. And I said, why don't you come home? And the wife called me up complaining. You know, my husband, he finishes work five, he doesn't come home till seven. Who knows, who knows what he's doing? I said, you know what I'm doing? Those two hours I sit in the car. I'm scared to come home. I'm scared to come home. When I, when I come home, the only thing I hear is complaints. The only thing I hear is nagging and crying about this and crying about that. <laughs> you know, there's no, you know, you come home, you come home, and, 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 and this, now I'm talking to women, the husband has to hear the same thing, you know, but, you know, he doesn't have to come with all the troubles, but, but it's very important, the same thing for your parents, don't always, and parents to children, first thing should always be complaining, crying, crying, and, and, you know, Baruch Hashem, and then if you have something to, to speak about, but, but it, a person has to remember to, 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 the, the mitzvah of showing your simcha and your panim. You know, the so as long as you say the panim is a shusha rabbin. The face is a, is a, is, a, is a public area. You know, always show a nice face to everybody. Make you know, you, you come into shul, greet every person. There's people coming into shul, and no one says hello to them. And I know so Weinberg used to always speak about these cliques in shul. You know, if you're not part of the family, you're not part of the clique, you come and you, you don't feel you're part of it. Yeah, and, and and you know. Make everyone feel good. Make everyone feel welcome. You know, the mitzvah of Levaya, the mitzvah of, of someone coming to your house, you have to accompany them. And to make them feel good. Make the person, the Gemara says that if someone's found not alive, you have to bring Egla Rufa because <coughs> maybe we didn't treat him properly. We didn't give him the self esteem. To make a person feel good. And, and that's what we are here in this world for. We're here to, to, to care about the other person. To show how much we care about the other person. There's a story. In, uh, there's a, pr- a young child that uh, the a single mother was raising this child, and the, the they were looking. The rub was looking for somebody to to learn with the child. Every Shabbos, the mother called up the rub and said, "Please find somebody to learn with my child." So the rub came to shul and he asked people. And there's one person who, whenever he came to any community work or anything, he said he was too busy. He heard the Rav say about learning with his child every Shabbos. He ran over to the Rav. I heard you ask you want someone to learn with this Baruch. I'm ready to learn with him. So the Rav, you know, was surprised. He never, he never had time for anything. All of a sudden, now he, he's coming. And uh, and every week Shabbos, he, ca- he used to come bring him an hour before Mincha. Brought the boy, learned with him. Till after Mincha walked him home, he couldn't believe what happened. Why? Why are you doing this? So I'll tell you. I grew up in in the, in the Lower East Side, and my father sent me from. We went to public school, and then he sent me to yeshiva. And my father used to Shabbos morning get up very early in the morning, and that was seven o'clock, and never. After davening, he used to put on his work clothing and go to work. He used to take a subway. It was the Nisayan of the 30s. People, to, you know, we don't understand what the Nisayan was of, of, of not having a job. And if you didn't work on Shabbos, you, you lost your job. And there was a whole term. And people found why they allowed it to rationalize. I remember when I was learning in Chicago, I was always wondering why there were shuls. The big shuls had Minyonim 7 o'clock and finishing by 9 o'clock. And still a remnant of the Nebuch people used to go to work. So, so my father used to used to go to work. Uh, Sunday morning when he came to Yeshiva, he said, this person, his name, he said, you know, the Rebbe used to ask everybody, did you learn with your father on Shabbos? 
You know, so everyone said, yes, he, he said what he learned. So he always used to say the same thing the boy said before. He was able to. So he said, one time, I was the first one. He asked, the Rebbe asked, where did you learn with your father on Shabbos? When he, he started crying, he ran out of the school, he ran home to Mommy, I'm not going back to Yeshiva. I want to go back to public school. I want to go back to public school. I want to go back to public school. He said, and, he, and when he was saying over the story, he was already a 70 year old man, he was saying this over the story to the Rav. He was crying, crying. It's still, he said, the embarrassment I had when I saw this little boy, the Rebbe's going to ask him to sh- tomorrow, what did you learn with your father? What is he going to answer? Harachmanas, you know, there's children in, in shul who, who need people to take care of them, who have to, to, to take care of them. And, you know, and sometimes the, the people looking for homes that wanted to take care of, help them, to care about the other person. So this person who went through the same thing when he was young felt what this child is going to go through. But just imagine a parent who doesn't have time for the children. When the child cries, the child is embarrassed. And to, to, to give time and to, to know and, and to, to, to remember the, the, the not to speak about your children, bad their children, not to speak to anybody bad about the children. You should always, the Marvin gives a rule, how do you remember? Always think of the person standing there when you speak about it. Always remember how would the person, would, would you talk about the person when the person is, would be standing there? What would you say in front of the person? And it's very important to, to always remember to, to show how much we care about each other, how much we do for each other. And, and it starts with parents, it starts with spouses, it starts with children, it starts with siblings, it starts with friends. You know, friends get together and speak against each other. And speak, you know what that she did today? You know what? I can't believe what she did today. It's Lashon why, why are you permitted to say it? It's pure Lashon You can't believe what I saw her do today. I can't believe what she wore today. I, you know, I mean, it's Lashon Are you allowed to say that? It's pure Lashon and we and people do it like it's part of life. We speak against each other, and and, and we're stopping Mashiach from coming. We're stopping Mashiach from coming. Uh, if, uh, every time we, we say something, and we don't say it properly, and we don't, uh, you know, and, and remember, remember that uh, you know it says that uh, you know the Chavetz Chaim writes in Pirkei Avos, you know, every word that you say goes up to Shemayim. You say you say something bad about a person. And then Rabbi Shem is judging the person. He says, wow, this person said this person is bad. You say something bad about your parents, about your children, about your spouse, about your, your, your siblings. About those words go up to Shemaim. This person said, witness that this person is bad. You are the one who said it. It's your words. So to, and, and the opposite, if you say good things, it's a, it's a good things. The Chaim Zonnefeld, the Chaim of Rocha, when he passed away, his wife passed away before him. So we, by the Levi, he said, after the Levi, I know for sure I'm going to get oil Maba. I'm sure you can get oil Maba. So why am I going to get oil Maba? He said, look, he said, I know I'm not a Talmud Chacham. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, he said about himself. My wife came up to Shemaim now. They asked, what did you do in this world? He said, I took care of a Talmud Chacham. She thought I was a Talmud Chacham. So she, so she, she came up to Shemaim and they said, look, I took care of my whole life of the Talmud Chacham. So, uh, so they said, oh, you get Ganeidin. So just imagine I come up to Shemaim. She's a Ganeidin because she took care of me. So they'll have to put me in Ganeidin. So because of her, I'll get Ganeidin. Because she said, she'll say, if you say good things about a person, you say good things about a person, those words are registered in Shemaim. The more good you say about a person, the, the better it is for a person. Sometimes, you know, people speak about I or you know, my heart means we say something bad about a person. The bunch of judges and says, look, the person said that bad thing about the person. When you say something bad about a person, those words are taken to Shemaim. You're a witness. Everyone comes a witness. So to be very careful, you know, uh, to, to, you know uh, what you say and how you say it. You know, when it comes to Shaduchim, you know, it's really, you know, by boys it's very prevalent, even by girls. You know, you go out with somebody, why does every girl have to know what the problem with that boy is? Why do you have to tell all your friends what you saw, what's wrong with that boy? Is that right? To be your brother, would you like everyone speaking about your brother? 
And would you like it? everyone saying these things? People get together, and you know, girls, you know, I went out with this boy, I couldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Why do you have to say it? It's, it's Lush and Hara. Why are you saying it? Why are you saying it? If it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Is there a heter to speak bad just because it wasn't a good shidduch? You wouldn't believe it. It was the worst thing. I can't believe the shatkan gave me the shidduch. It's a sashnar against the shatkan, a sashnar against the person. But we do it. We all do it. We speak. We speak, you know, you, you know someone reads your shidduch. You speak to your friends about the shidduch. And we're speaking, parents speak uh, to others, you know, and they speak about, you know, the family. Just because you're going for shidduch means there's a, a heter uh, to, to just go out and say everything you want against a person. And it's a, it's a blanket heter. And there's no heter. There's halachas, you know, the Chavetz Chaim, with his goyness, he found the heter why he allowed to ask information and how he asked information and, and how he gave the information and what you should say and how you should say it. And it's one of the big problems, you know, we have. You know, everyone is asked information. Everyone is asked information. Especially girls are asked about their friends and neighbors are asked about their neighbors. And, and you ask information. People are asked, what should you say? Are you allowed to say bad things about the neighbor? Uh, uh, you know, and sometimes you should say, and you don't say. And all of a sudden, you know, the Chalz Chaim writes that in the same passage that says, they say Lech Rachel Bamecha, you shouldn't speak Lash Nara. The same Pasik says, Lay Samoy the Adam Reacha, don't stand idly by when your brother's blood is being spilled. So why is it put together? So it says the Chavitz Chaim, because these are the two things that you always have to weigh. If I speak Lash Nara here, am I uh, am I gonna hurt somebody? If I don't speak Lash Nara, someone else is gonna be hurt. You know somebody is gonna be abusive. Somebody is gonna be abusive. You know, a person is abusive, and someone's going out to that person, and you don't want to say anything. All of a sudden, you become a tzedekus. I don't want to say anything bad. You know, a girl that you saw always was very abusive, and and, and you see you see that that's what she's going to do later also. And you don't say anything, and they get married and they get divorced. You could have stopped that, and they had, they had a terrible life together. It's like Samad Adam Reacha. You're standing idly by. When that's why you're allowed to say something. That's the whole heter to say something, because when when you see your friend, and you know that you could protect a friend, you know a person, uh, you know. Let's go to extreme. You know a girl who who's mechal shabbos, and, and and you know about it, but they call you. you don't want to say anything about it. And they get married and they have their most the, the, the most terrible, uh, you know, relationship. You know, and you could have stopped it. But then all of a sudden you become a tzedekus. Then when you shouldn't say anything, people say something. I once had a, a parents come with their daughter to me in Chalmoyt Pesach, crying that they, they, they almost had, were finishing the shidduch, and everything was, the boy was supposed to come in already and and uh, propose and have a vart, a chayim a vart. The last minute, they called up that they, they don't want to come in. So what happened? What happened? So they found out from the Shatchan that they heard some information about this girl. They heard some information about this girl. So what did you hear? What the Shatchan? Something had nothing to do with this girl. And, and, they, and, and the, the Shatchan found out who was the one who gave the information. They called the person. They said, do you realize, you know, oh, I made a mistake. It was the wrong girl. So meanwhile, the girl is still not married. The girl is still not married. And, and and you know so, so when you should speak, you know the Yitzhar makes you not speak. When you know something is not going to be all of a sudden, and when you shouldn't speak, you do you know uh, then we do say we say things, you know we say something you know someone speaks to you and asks you about your friends, and you don't even realize that you know if you say something this girl is an app, uh, or this girl you know uh, or any other language you use. Uh, as OCD or ADD or whatever it is, <laughs> and, and 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 people hear that, and and then when it comes to shidduch, you know they ask the, the boy says, I heard my sister say this girl is not really, and really you know the girl didn't know she was saying anything bad, you know they were just talking, and, and meanwhile you you ruin the chances for a girl, and, and, and so you have to be very careful even to, to speak about even sometimes teachers speak about students, they say things about students and it affects the student's life later. I had a teacher call me yesterday, a teacher in eighth grade in a different city, that the principal of the high school wants to speak to her. 
about the girls in the eighth grade. So she called, you know, what should I, you know, what should I, what am I allowed to say? What should I say? And, and, and she was very worried. I said, you're the right person to be given permission. If you're worried and you'll be careful. I once had, uh, years ago, uh, a principal uh, who became a young woman, became principal. She called me up. She's nervous to become a principal. She said, you know, uh, that, you know, a principal, you have to speak Lashon Hara, you speak. Uh, you teachers, you know, you know, there's no have to speak Lashon Hara just because you're a teacher. There's no have to speak Lashon Hara just because you're a parent. Just because your parent doesn't mean you're allowed to speak, you're not allowed to come to the teacher and tell the teacher, you know, what kind of child I have. You know, it's Lashon Hara. You, you, you're not doing anyone a favor by saying bad things about your child. If you need help and it's done in the right way and it's done for that purpose, the Toelis, and you do it to the right person, then you're allowed to do it. But if you don't do it to the right person, you don't do it the right way. You know, then the, the situations that, that, that bring Lashon Hara, you know, family coming together on Pesach, uh, any young tif. How come I wasn't invited? How come they got a better place? How come uh, mommy gives the gives that baby that chil- those children she likes those children better than my children? She gives more attention to those children. How come you know and the, the son-in-law complains and the daughter-in-law complains and they speak against each other and they speak and I'm not coming here again and and the parents complain what kind of children you have? And these situations are situations where you you have to remember there's a sudden there. There's a story where uh, somebody uh, uh, moved into a into a house, and he said he feels kedusha in this home, and and uh, he wanted to find out what was so special in this house. So there's a goiter who used to work in the house for me, the people who stayed before, and, and now she was still there. So he said, "Is there anything special that happened in this house?" So I'll tell you what happened. That I know what happened. He says, w- one day. Uh, you know, the, 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 the rubber before used to have special matzahs that he baked for Pesach. And he worked uh, days uh, with a chabura and all the chumras. And he used to, he wrapped up the matzahs and he uh, waited for the first night of Pesach to get those matzahs. He comes the first night of Pesach. He looks for the bag, the matzahs, they're not there. He looks up high or low, he didn't find it. So then he asks the guy, he says, did you see some, he said, you mean those crackers? He says, she was babysitting. She was babysitting. And, and, you know, the children were crying. So she looked all around to find something to give them. She found a bag of crackers. These are the big. So she gave the children the crackers. He said, he didn't say a word to me. He didn't say a word to me. He said, oh, family, we have to take out regular matzahs now. And... And, and, you know, like, let's say if someone made a mistake in your house, burned your food, well, how are you going to react? If someone, uh, uh, you know, spilled something, broke something, how are you going to react? Pesach time, when the nerves are really at end. And, and you know, uh, and to be careful, to be careful, you know, not to hurt anybody, just because just you're nervous. And, and to be careful how we treat each other, not to speak against each other. And, and to, to make it enjoyable, to Chag Pesach is Chag Simcha. Is a young tiff where we want to make everything happy for everybody, <coughs> and, and and things, situation, family situations. How many family feuds come from stupid things? You know, why didn't she talk to me nicely? Why didn't she call me? You know, uh, she should call me. I'm, uh, I'm older and I'm the parent. Why does she call me? And, and so on and so forth. And, uh, stupid things to cause a feud and cause a machlekes. Parents don't speak to children. Children don't speak to parents. The children don't speak to each other. Brothers and sisters don't speak to each other. It's mamish, uh, and, and it's the worst thing. Machloikas is the worst thing. It's the worst thing in the world. During the Gulf War, Professor Weinberg wrote a whole article after the Gulf War, and she wrote a beautiful article. It's printed in the book also. The, that the Gulf War showed Achdus and Klal Yisrael. The whole Klal Yisrael came together that time. And many of you don't remember the Gulf War. Those who remember, uh, where everyone came together. People had to be in locked rooms. They had to go in in in, in a cheder, a, 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 a tuma, and they had to go and people were sitting together in rooms, 20 people together, and caring and doing for each other. She wrote, "That's the reason why that we were helped that time." We're going through a very terrible time now. Also, every day we hear stories. Besides the knives, besides, you know, a bus goes and six people are killed, young people. 
children in the last month, 25 young children, Kribbutz in Eretz Yisrael, and also in Haredim, and all over. And, and, and it means we're doing something wrong. <coughs> we're not acting nicely to each other. We're not doing things right to each other. And it starts at home. How do we act at home? It's very nice to act nice outside. It's very nice, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, some people say, you know, uh, your sister's so nice. My sister, uh, be, it's a different person. She comes home, uh, uh, you know, she becomes a different, she's not the same person. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow, she's such a nice kid. You know, I love the mother says, yeah, well, well, I know. But maybe you're talking about the wrong child. It's not my child. You know, and, and to, 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 to be nice at home. So, you know, you come home to your parents and, and, and you know, kibbut aveim. It's a mitzvah, the biggest mitzvah in the Torah. Kibbut aveim. Whenever I see people who live long, Baruch Hashem, I always ask, what was the mitzvah of kibbut aveim they did? The, and it always, there, there was a kibbut aveim. People who live in, in, in late 90s, they all, the mitzvah of kibbut aveim, there's no greater mitzvah in the Torah. And to show, be nice to parents and to, to be good to parents. And, and kids that are, are nourished properly. You know, p- parents who, the child knows, my, my parent loves me more than anything in the world. The Vayashim wants families to be together. The Vayashim special created that there should be families, there should be parents, children, siblings, friends, spouses. The Vayashim created because those are the people, the Psarchal Altus Alim. The first one you have to worry about, the first one you have to worry about is your, your friend. You know, the, I was once at a Levaya with 100,000 men, and you won't know who got up at the Levaya to speak? A woman. You know who that woman was? The Satan Rebetzin. Wow. The Satan Rebetzin got up to speak at her husband's Levaya. Why? The cover that he gave to his Rebetzin, the cover that he gave to his Rebetzin's whole life, the cover that he gave to her, and uh, she gave him also the cover she gave him. But the cover, and everyone knew that the, his whole life was the Rebetzin. And so his whole life was uh, to, the, the cover we give to each other, caring for each other, doing for each other. And, and uh, you know, this is where it all comes, it all starts with, you know, how much we do and we care for the other person, how much we do for the other person. And, and you know, how much do you do for your child? How much do you do for your parents? How much do you do for your spouse, for your siblings, for your friends? Give, give. That's what the main thing is, you know, the more you give, the more you get. And, and that's what uh, the Rebbe wants from us. And that's really everything. In the world. You know, many the people ask many questions about Shiduchim. So first of all, we spoke before about venting. Uh, and, and that's one of the things also the Chavetz Chaim, the Ga'inus of the Chavetz Chaim, you know, you know, says you a lot of vent. But there's conditions. You have to know who do you speak it to. Is this the right person you should vent to? Is you going to say something to this girl? Is this girl going to tell everybody? Is this person going to say, I, should you vent to your spouse about your parents? No. No. To, uh, you shouldn't. You should go to someone else. Should you vent to which girl should you say something to? Is this girl going to keep a secret? Is this girl going to understand? Or is this girl going to have bad things against her parents? Are people gonna s- when it comes to Shaduchim, is she going to tell people what's happening? And you have to be careful. And the best thing is to vent to a professional. To go to someone who you know is a discreet and professional and won't say anything to anybody and, and will be careful what they say and how they say it and who they say it to. You have to be very careful. But, but, but you allowed to vent. Are you allowed to listen to someone venting to you? Are you allowed to listen? So if you vent and you hear the person and you're doing it only to help the person and you don't believe what the person says 100%, you have to know sometimes people exaggerate and sometimes it's taken out of context, and, and, and you don't act upon it. You're there to help that person. You know, once, uh, you know, one lady once called me, she always has this person always coming, venting to her, always coming, saying all these things. I said, look, you're doing a mitzvah, you know, help the person, and try to show the person how they're, uh, the, the good things, you should always see the good things in every person, and, and help the person. The person's venting means something is bothering them. And, and if something's bothering them, you, you have to you have to go and help. But chas v'shalom, you should go tell other people about what they vent. Chas v'shalom. You know, a girl says something to another girl, and the girl tells her best friend, you don't believe me what that girl told me. You know what you did that to that girl? You murdered that girl. 
And there's a girl who went off the derech because of that. Because she poured out her heart to somebody. And, 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 she, and the person went, you know, that, that's a loch. If someone says it's something said to a person in confidence, you're not allowed to tell anybody about it. You're not allowed to tell anything, anybody, anybody in the world about something said in confidence. You know, um, I gave a lecture in, in by, by a convention of uh, Manalim, and um, uh, so, I, so one Manal, one Rashiva asked, "What happens if the school makes a rule that if anything a teacher hears, the teacher has to tell the Manal? Is the teacher allowed to tell the Manal?" I said, "Could the school make a rule you should be a ver? Could the school make a rule you should be a ver? If the Manal feels." That this teacher is still young and not competent, and she might hear things. So the, the manal could go over and say, you know, in this case, maybe if you heard something, you have to tell me because there's some girls that you don't realize who, what they are doing. But just to listen to old Russian horror. I mean, one Rosh Hashiva once said that his head is so full of old Russian horror, he can't stand it. He can't stand all the Russian horror he hears. To, to, to hear, to, to listen to bad things, we should only hear good things about people, only see good in every person. See, the, and every person has good. Uh, the, the, tells the Rebbe and said, what's the difference? It says, Ayin Toiva. Rabbi Yochanan asked his Talmidim, what kind of midah should you have? And he said, Ayin Toiva, a good eye. And what kind of midah shouldn't you have? A bad eye. He said, what's the difference between a good eye and a bad eye? He says, every person has good qualities. There's not a, no person in the world that doesn't have any good qualities. And every person has some faults. Every person, no one is perfect. Ayin Toiva sees the good in every person. In every person they see good. Every person they see good. Ein Ra, Ein Ra is, is, sees only the bad. Oh, right away you pick up the bad in every person. There was one of the Shivas in Shibin, Rav Ram Ganachovsky, you know, so somebody called up uh, to ask information about a Bacher. And he said, I spoke to Rav Ram. Rav Ram said, this is the best Bacher. And, and this person said, I don't know what you're talking about. Abram saw every bacher the best bacher. He saw only the good in it. He saw every bacher a good. You see the good in every person. You see the good. Uh, we should see the good in every person. See the, every person. One of the secrets to find, in you, see the good in your parents, even if they have faults. See the good part they have. See the good in your children. See the good in your spouse. See the good in your siblings. See the good in your friends. Have ein toiva. If you have ein ra, it ruins your life. Every time you're always cynical and always see bad, it mamish ruins your life. You always see only bad. Everyone is hurting you. Everyone is out to get you. Everyone, uh, you. I tell you, Baruch Hashem, everything Baruch Hashem does is good. You never see anything bad. Everything you hear is only good. You know, uh, there's one of the colors, uh, one of the girls who were injured yesterday, in the, in, uh, two days ago in the bus, is a color supposed to get married in three weeks. And we should daven for her. Sora Bastina Shabba Fushlema. And her parents got up and, and, and said, and spoke and said, you know, we know what everything the Banisham does is for good. And we don't we're not angry at the driver, we're not angry at anybody. And even though he maybe people say he's at fault, he says, We know it's some Rabbanishad. The Banisham is testing us. And Baruch Hashem, look, she's getting better. She went through a ten hour operation. And they were going to push off the chasana of Chaim Knevsky, Shlita Paskin. They shouldn't push off the chasana, and he'll, she'll have her for Shalema. But to see the good, to see the good, so and one person will always see the bad in every person. And, and see, you know, and, and be angry at, be angry at the egged, be angry at the driver, be angry at. And the other person, look, Rabbi wants, you know, and, and, you know, the justice has to be done, but there's no reason I have to go around with anger. No re reason, you know, some people are only happy when they're angry. Some people always have to put down other people. And the only time they're happy when they put someone else down. Uh, a, a, a person, you know, a good person, always sees the good. You know, uh, there's uh, some people uh, giving him trouble. Some are giving him trouble. And uh, one day the person who was giving him trouble came to get a, sm a haskama and a safer. He came to get, get a haskama and a safer. Get, uh, Approbation on the Sefer. And Moshe went and wrote a beautiful Askama. So the children said, Abba, how could you give uh, Papa, how could you give, uh, you know, he, you know the troubles he gave you? So he said, What do you mean? 
Since that day, I said every day at night, I meichel every person. And I, on Yom Kippur, I said, I meichel. So he did something. I forgave him. I wanted him to suffer. I want him to suffer forever just because he did something against me. You know, a girl did something. I'm angry and ruined. I'm, I, I, the Chas Hashem, if you, you say that, the Rav Hashem judges you first. If you go and, and say something about, about the other person. Yeah, and, you know, so a person should always see that, that everything the Hashem does is only for good. And everything you see is only good. And, and to remember, but also in the same time, you have to remember that if you know something that you could help and you don't help, you know a girl that's going through trouble and, you know, you could go to a teacher and, and tell the teacher might help the person and will help the person, but you don't want to ruin your friendship and you don't want to be, you know, uh, someone who is not part of the group. And because that the girl has to does things and you could help the girl, you know, and so you get an aver. You could, if you could help a person and you don't help a person. If a person is going to, tr- uh, says a girl tells you something in confidence that she's doing things that she shouldn't do, and you know you could help her, and you could go to a discreet person and help her and save her, and you don't, you're responsible for her because you could have helped her. If, uh, you know, there's a famous uh, case in in uh, Far Rockaway where t- uh, a woman came to a rov and she was saying, I'm sick of my husband, I don't go to Mikveh anymore. I don't want to go to Mikveh. I don't believe in Mikveh. So the rov told her, you know, I'll have to tell your husband, you to If you don't go to Mikveh, he's not allowed to live with you. It's usher, it's chorus. You know, I will have to tell you. But you're not allowed to tell my husband. It's a breach of confidence. I came to you uh, to help me. So, and then she went to a second row, and they went, and they, and, and they did tell the husband. So this woman went and sued these two rabbanim. Took them to court and sued them that it's breach of confidentiality. You went to tell the husband. So but that's what happened in court. So she went, she thought for sure she's going to win in court, the breach of confidentiality. So the court, the, the lawyer brought a case, uh, you know, in, you always, when you, in courts for criminal acts, you always bring uh, the case. There was a case in, in, in the Supreme Court where there was a priest who in confession, someone told the priest that he's going to kill somebody. And the priest did not <coughs> reveal it and the person was killed. So the Supreme Court said that the priest is guilty of murder. But it's confidentiality. It says even if there's confidentiality, there's also, <laughs> you know, you have to know when you're supposed to, if you know someone's going to be killed, you don't you know there's no confidentiality. If someone tells you something, you could save the person, you don't save. So the court said, and that's what the Lord, that by a Jewish person living with a woman without going to mikveh is tantamount to murder. It's just like killing him. So we have to save the husband. So and and, and the rabbanim were vindicated, and you know because they. But to, to remember that you have to remember to not hurt people and see the good. But if you remember, if you could save a person and you just stand idle and don't do anything, you're responsible. I remember as a young child, there was the biggest case in New York where there was somebody being murdered, and, and there's five big buildings, hundreds, thousands of people living, everyone was looking out, watching, and no one did anything. No one did it. We don't want to get involved. We don't get involved. You should get involved. Have some wine because someone got involved. And sometimes, you, you know, people, you know, don't give you the biggest cover of getting involved. But you get involved. You get involved. You do. You have to help a person. You know, and, and she, this is what we always have to do. Help a person and know how to, to help people. If, if a person... You know, hears, uh, you know, goes out to the boy, and doesn't feels the boy is not for, for her. Is she allowed to tell her parents about it? Is she allowed to tell the shotgun about it? Is she allowed to tell her friends about it? The loch is, they only allowed to tell what you have to tell. Them. The best thing is you tell your parents. You know, it's not for me. But the parents always say, I want to know why not. You know, you know, the parents always feel maybe, maybe the girl is just uh, doesn't understand and it's, it's hard. So the loch is, if you know that you have to tell your parents, and you say, you say the minimum you have to tell, and, and you just go say everything, and got start speaking bad about the book, or just say the thing that bothers you, and say this bothers me, and the same with the shotgun, most times you don't have, you shouldn't tell the shotgun. 
and, and friends you surely shouldn't tell unless you know then there's no reason to tell other people about it and if someone knows something one, uh, uh, about a, a girl and nobody knows this thing about the girl you know there's a medical problem with this girl should you go tell if someone asks information should you go tell it you know there's a problem you know a few days ago someone called me up with a Shaila that they know know there's a Shalom bias problem in the house and someone called them they know there's always quarreling in the home and and so I said does it affect the children is the girl a good girl you know you know, before you say anything bad, before you ruin a shidduch, before you kill a shidduch, is it, is, did it affect the girl? And it didn't. The girl is the best. Sometimes people, despite, in spite of, because they see the quarreling, they become better parents, better husbands, spouses. You know, before you say something bad, they would have killed the shidduch. And, and before you say something, if you know a medical problem, so the, the, the aloha is that, first of all, you have to know it firsthand. You have to know it firsthand. You have to know for sure and it, it's something that's not speculating and something that you really know for sure that, it ha that there's a problem like that. And after you know for sure, the, it, it, most of the time, if a person has a medical problem, they will tell the chassan after the third, second, third date. <coughs> They'll tell themselves. And, and uh, they, so the best thing is, you know, you could speak to the girl and say, you, you know, you're going to say everything. But to go say things, if you're not sure, just because you think is wrong, and, and you have to be very careful what you say. Even when you go ask information, you're not a snoop. You know, sometimes you find if you don't say why you're asking, you'll find out the real dirty stuff. You know, if I'm, I'm going to say it's for a shidduch, they won't tell me. The Allah is you're not allowed to do that. You have to say, I'm asking for a shidduch. And, I'm a and, the, and if, if someone calls you from out of town, you don't know who they are, don't say anything bad because you never know where it's going to go, what it's going to do. Uh, what could, uh, you know, they might spread Lush and horror about the family and say things. Uh, you know, if someone calls out of town, you, you only say the good things. You know, don't say things that aren't true, but say the good things about the person. But don't say anything bad if you, you don't know. You have to be very careful, uh, uh, very careful not to, to say things because people will spread one of the seven rules of the of tell us is something that the person is not going to be punished more than he deserves. You know, like. Uh, and, and, to, the, and not everything should be told to parents either. You know, if you know a girl did something, not every parent knows how to handle it. Not every parent knows how to handle it. And you, s you speak to someone who you know knows how to handle it. Your parents feel that they have to know everything. Why didn't you tell me? If you know a parent doesn't know how to handle it, you shouldn't tell the parent. You know, uh, I, I had, when I was in Detroit, we had a sifter, And uh, one night, you know, I was learning at night, and the, the day school went home, the base Yuda, the day school went home at 4 or 5 o'clock, and we came to learn at night. I got a frantic call from the mother that her son didn't come home from school that day. This is, uh, he didn't come home from school that day. So uh, I, I, we said, okay, I'm going to send out the boys to find him. So they went out, they found him in the field hiding. <coughs> and he was crying, they brought him to me, and so I said, you know, what happened? Why didn't you go home? He said, my parents told me if I come home with a bad mark, they'll kill me. And so, first of all, to use the phrase, kill is wrong. Uh, it says in the Gemara, you should never use that phrase, I'll kill you, even if you don't mean it. Because children sometimes don't have imaginations, and they really think the parents can come kill them. You know, they, uh, and you never know, children suffer their whole life from, from <coughs> the nightmares. You know, using terms that are, uh, that are really not healthy. But then... So I uh, said, he's scared to go home. He doesn't want home. They're going to, I said, they're not going to kill you. I said, they're going to not kill me. They're going to murder me. You know, they're going to, you know, they're going to hurt me. And so I said, okay, I called up the parents. I said, I know where your son is, but I can't send him to you because I can't send him to let you hurt him. Uh, I'll take him to my house. The only way I could let him come to you if you promise that you're not going to do anything to him and, and you're going to take care of him. And so they promised the Baruch Hashem, the Bacher turned out a good Bacher. And he, you know, but he, 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 just because someone's a parent, parent does not have a heter to abuse their child, to hurt their child. You know, you have to, you know, people go to school for everything. And for parenting, you don't go to school. How do you parent? How do you t speak properly to your child? How do you bring up your child properly? A and the same thing, we don't go to school, how to give Kibbut Avein. And the Baruch Hashem now many schools teach Kibbut Avein, the halachas of Kibbut Avein. And, keep it, and to, to respect your spouse 
uh, and to, to, to give the proper respect for, for a spouse, a proper respect for, for siblings, to know how to, to, to take care of things and do things. And it's very important to remember that, you know, the, what you do, and, and, and uh, it's the, the, the biggest thing you could do for a person to make them feel good. There's no, the Gemara says you could give a person a thousand dollars, but you say one nice word to them is worth more than all the money in the world. The way you speak to a person, uh, you know, the Gemara brings down uh, in, that there's two people who are uh, taking care of the parent, and one takes care of the parent and loses Eilam Malba. And one takes care of parent and gets out of the mother. I once, um, before I say the Gemara, I once had the Shaila. Someone called me up. Uh, the parent were not well. And the uh, doctor says, you have to have her feed her, eat herself. And the mother said, no, you have to feed me. You have to feed me. The doctor says, you have to have her eat herself. If not, it's not going to be good for her. It's not going to be good for her if she doesn't eat herself. You have to have eat herself. And so the family called me up. Are they allowed to go against the parent? Uh, the, the mother is saying, you're being a bad child. I tell you, feed me. I, I don't want to eat myself. And, 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 and the doctor said that it's better if, if she eats herself, it's going to be healthier. And so I said, you're not allowed to say it in a bad way, but you say it in a nice way, Mommy, we're doing it for your good. It's better for you to eat yourself. It's, uh, you know, not chatzon. So the mother brings down that the person who gets out of the is a person who made his father work. He made his father work. But he made him work for a good purpose. He made him work because he wanted the father, the Morbings on this for tax purpose, for other reasons. And but so even though he made him work, but it was done, let's say all the parents, you let him come to work and you come please come to work, you give him a purpose in life. The other one was giving the father the best food in the world, the best food in the world. But he used to say, Come fresh your food. That's what he used to say. So he lost his oil whole oil in my butt even though he gave him the best. The way you speak to the other person, the way you, you give you, is, so you could either gain oil and abba, or you could lose oil and abba. If, if you speak nicely, and you say something nicely to the person, and, and, you, and it's done in a nice way, then you, you get oil and abba, chas v'shalom. If you don't, so a person has to be very careful how we speak to each other, how we care for each other. And the main thing is, remember, don't speak bad about people. See, you speak only good. If something bothers you, go to a person who can hear you. Don't just say it to every person. Don't go around speaking about other people. We want Mashiach to come. We're waiting for Mashiach to come. And we could all bring Mashiach if we act properly. We could all bring Mashiach if we, we do every, our diligence in being careful what we say to others, how we say it to others, and how we care to, uh, for, uh, for others. The, you know, then the Rabbi Shalom will help us. There was... Uh, story where a person you know, was uh, he came to shul and he didn't talk too much. He never used to talk a lot. And, and people you know, uh, said, why doesn't he talk? You know, he's not friendly, he's antisocial. He's not, uh, you know, why doesn't he? And one day they came to speak to him, you know, why are you? He said, I saw that when people come to shul and they talk to each other and they hurt each other, you know, the person is not davening good. And people come to shul, you know, how come she's wearing that dress? How come her shaitl is not good? How come, you know, you speak and, and hurt each other? I decided that I'm not going to talk. And when before he was nifter, before he was nifter, he left a huge amount of money for the shul. And he said, the purpose of the m money that I'm leaving is that any person in shul who keeps quiet and doesn't say anything, I want them to get every month $1,000. I want them to see. You come to shul. Shul is not a place where you answer cell phones. A shul is not a place where you know, shul is a, a holy place. A holy place. You come to a shul, and a shul is a place where you make people feel good. You, you talk to others and say, make them feel good. And remember that every situation you get into, any situation you get into, you should know there's a reason for that situation, and there's no reason to get nervous at people, get angry at people, speak against people, hurt people. Everything, the Rabbani has a reason for everything that happens. And everything that happens, there is a purpose for it. You know, uh, I'll just end with, uh, you know, Shalakim's uh, other story, you know, uh, uh, the, the, that, you know, uh, this, uh, this uh, person, you know, uh, a Rebbe, who uh, never had his pictures in the newspaper. His pictures never in the newspaper. 
And so he told us, well, how come they, all these rebbers get their pictures lighting candles, or bonum, or shivas, uh, lighting candles, lighting, and never put my picture. Call up the newspaper and tell them they should come take a picture of me. So they went, and uh, she called the newspaper and said, you know, why don't you come to my rebbe? So your rebbe never heard of him. What do you mean? He's the biggest rebbe. Why don't he's my rebbe? He said, you have to come. He said, but it's after Hanukkah. So that's not a problem. We come, we'll put up a menorah, we'll put up the candles, and the rebbe will shuckle and make, and you can take a picture. You know, you know, uh, you know, you'll, we'll take a picture. So, you know, the photographer comes, the newspaper comes, and they're ready to take a picture. He's standing, shuckling away. All of a sudden, he slips on the floor. He slips on the floor, and all of a sudden, the photographer starts taking pictures, pictures, pictures. <laughs> so, he uh, says, what are you doing? Taking pictures? I fell. What? what? He said, before we took a picture of you, you wanted me to take a picture of you lighting, you know, take a picture of Dikas Chametz. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to be the first one, you're going to be the first one in the paper of having a picture of Dikas Chametz. We'll have you with uh, Dikas Chametz there. So, the... So the lesson of it is, you know, you think you fell. Whatever you do, the bunch of has its ways. You could, could be bidikas could be whatever. You know, the bunch you, you think you know you fell and never. So you, your picture will still be there. Sometimes the people fall. People go through life, and every every person in life goes through times of tribulation. Every person goes through. The test is to be able to withstand that. To be able to, even though you go through tribulations. Even you go through the worst things, you know, and our generation has to give the biggest yashkoyach for the generation who went through the Holocaust. You know, that, uh, and where, you know, I always used to ask my father's family, you know, you know, didn't he have questions? He saw his family, so everyone, he said, we, we knew, we shouldn't, we know there's questions, but we know there's no answer for every question. We know the Rabbanim Shem, everything he does, everything, you're going through something bad, why me? The Rabbanim Shem knows why you. The Rabbanim Shem knows why you. And this, if a person has betochen, and most of Lashon Hara comes when you're not happy with yourself, you're, you know, the, and you feel bad about yourself, you feel inferior, and you feel hurt, feel good about yourself. That's the first thing. Remember, feel good about yourself. Feel that Rabbi Hashem created you. Feel happy that Rabbi Hashem created you. If you're happy, for Hashem, look at the beautiful world. You know, sometimes people tell me it's such a bad generation. I said it's the most beautiful generation. You know, uh, whoever thought after the Holocaust will have all these people here? Whoever thought, like, look at all these people sitting here. So coming for what? Not coming to have a comedy. Not coming, coming to for one purpose, to do the Ratzon Hashem. To come do the Ratzon Hashem. Thousands of people go to Lakewood, go to Pinevich, go to Amir, go uh, thousands of people learning, learning, learning. And people who could go to everything. It's the most beautiful generation. And, I, and I, there's a person always call, and I always scold him. How could you say it's a bad generation? It's the best generation. This is the generation that's going to bring Mashiach. A generation that, you know, just so when they said there's three people who, uh, there's, there's Mayor Shapiro made the Dafayoimi. The, the difference that Dafayoimi made, unbelievable. You know, so, so, you know it starts, people start the day with Dafayoimi. And there's Halochi Yoimis, and there's Rambam Yoimis, and there's all kinds. And the third person was Sor Shneer. Sarah Schneer, what she did for Klai Yisrael, what she did for Klai Yisrael. If you have all these girls here, it's only because of Sarah Schneer. Sarah Schneer picked up the pride of her being a Ben Yisrael. That's what she did. Be proud who you are. You are a Ben Yisrael. Be proud being a, a Erlich girl. The time between the two world wars, the, you know, the people used to look down at Yeshiva Bachrim. And, and girls, bef they didn't have education, and, and, and that's when uh, girls started being educated in, in, uh, in colleges and gymnasium. And from a girl, started feeling they're nothing. So, so Shneer and Rabbanisham gave her this, Rabbanisham sent her to this world, sent her to this world to pick up the Benois Yisrael. Be proud of being Erlich, be proud of davening. Baruch look, you see these girls nowadays davening, and girls who, who want to do the Ratzon Hashem ask questions, you want to do, uh, come, you know, it's unbelievable what we have. This is generation that's bringing Mashiach. It's a generation that wants to hear, wants to be Makabal, wants to do things. And but we have to remember the Satan is there to fight us. The Satan will do everything possible that we should, you know, speak Lashon Hara. So there's a program called Maksim Lafi, where for an hour you don't speak Lashon Hara. So you always laugh at it. Someone says, one hour I'm not going to eat pork. I mean, the rest of the day you could eat pork. I can't talk now because it's my maximum fee hour. And afterwards you could talk. You know, what do you mean? What do you mean you could talk? <laughs> is Lashnar an Avera or not? If it's an Avera, 
How could you have one hour? One hour I don't speak Lashnara. One hour you don't speak Lashnara? He never, uh, one hour I don't do an Avera. The Territ says, what Maxim Fee does, <coughs> it programs you. It programs you to be able to program yourself that you could see that you could go with life without speaking Lashnara. Because Lashnara is a very, very hard thing. Lashnara is something that's very hard and because it's emotional, because it's very hard. So, uh, so uh, uh, what you do with Maxim Lafi is, you could see one hour, so I could do another hour, I could do two hours, I could do three hours, I could go a whole day like this. The Chavetz Chaim, the, the Rav of uh, Detroit, the Blaze of the Vinsman, Rav, used to learn by the Chavetz Chaim. He so said, the Chavetz Chaim, when he was older person, used to talk a whole day. He didn't. But he never said one avak lashon har. He never said one word, one word that even smelled of lashon har. You can live your whole life without speaking bad. You can have a good life without hurting anybody. You can have the best life without hurting anybody. And that's what Rabbi wants. Rabbi wants us to know that uh, you w- the Rabbi created this world, a good world. We shouldn't ruin his world. We should, the, the world is the, the best world you could have because God made it. And if you believe in God, God only makes the best. So the world we have, you can't blame anything on the world. We could do things... And we could make the world and make it a pleasant place for people. Make your home a pleasant place for people. Make your home a pleasant place for your parents, for your children, for your spouse especially. Make, make, make friendship. Go out. To, if you see a girl that doesn't have friends, go over, be her friend. Bring her into it. No, she, no, I can't. Doesn't bring her. You, you don't have a saga. How you, people who go away and say, you know, one girl came to a teacher and said, you know, because of you, I stayed through my whole life. Everywhere else, everyone else put me down. You always saw the good in me, brought the, the best in me. And, 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 and said, teachers have to be careful how you treat. And the parents have to be careful. Friends have to be careful. And if you're like Rebetz and Weinberg, you remember this one thing. We're all Eber Hashem. And she always wrote, if you have betochen and you have simcha, that's the answer to everything. If you have simcha and you have betochen, then your divine Shem helps you but everything you do. Rabbi Hashem should help that all of us should be zayich to only have simchas. And if we sometimes go through tribulations, we should have betochen. And if you have betochen, you'll have simcha again. And with schusnes, we should be zayich the biggest simcha, the goal of Amen. Amen. This year is dedicated to Rabbi Tzin Phyllis Weinberg, Rabbi Tzin Chaya Feiga Merol Bas Rabbi Yechiel Fryan Fischel.